Welcome back to another Tech Depth Repair video. In today's edition, we'll be focusing on the iPhone 11 Pro screen repair. So this video will demonstrate step-by-step uh, -step how to like fix the 11 Pro without putting too much thought being efficient, fast, efficient service for the client, and hopefully get very good customer satisfaction. So please stay tuned and let's get back to the video. So the first thing you're gonna need is to get a panel of screws. By the way, I highly recommend the magnetized 3-2U tools, I'm sorry, uh, because these are very efficient at storing your screwdrivers at the same time keeping them magnetized. And we also have them in our website, techdev.com. So this has a little bit of grease, so you wanna go easy with that. And it's also good to have one of those little magnetic map mat because um, the most common mistakes technicians do usually is to like disregard or like <clears throat> misplace tiny screws. Uh, even a tiny screw can make or break the repair. So I highly recommend that you get one of these, which we also sell on our website. And by the way, guys, if you saw any parts or tools, you can always check, uh, check the links below in the descri description. Um, we do also offer mail-in repair and advanced data recovery service. So please feel free to check us out at techdev.com. Thank you for the support. I would only use a pry tool, um, <clears throat> like a eye scissor or eye opener, but there are also certain tools called Jimmy tools, but you know, it doesn't really matter for this case, only if you want to make sure to use the right one without causing any cracks and damage because as you may have seen earlier on this video, the LCD was fine and it's only a cracked LCD. So you wanna be cautious. Um, for beginner, you can always add a little bit of isopropyl alcohol. Um, heat is preferable if you only have a certain type of experience, but like if you're just in the new process of becoming a technician, I always recommend that you follow every careful step, which by the way, will be like doing other videos just to show like the difference in terms of repairability design. So that being said, like it's really recommended that you do the extraction while the screen is on, just to make sure you don't apply a lot of tension and you successfully extract it without creating lines. So that's the most important fact because there are recyclable screen and they're considered to be asset because it helps you like with the inventory. So we're gonna be very careful, just poke, poke, poke. Certain technician just like to slide. Um, I don't recommend it because you see here there's cracks. So it's best to go easy and slowly. Poke, 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 poke. And there we go. We have a Pokemon 11 Pro. Nice. Just go like this. Boom. Nice. It's coming out. Yep. So make sure when you open it, it opens like a book. Power button, not this way, the other way. Nice. Make sure the screen works, perfect. Nice, now we can turn it off after testing. You wanna like, make sure there is no yellow spot because like sometimes recycler, they try to like do some sketchy, iffy, hush hush type of deal. So if there's any black spot or white spot, it would be considered a C. If it's clean, uh, you can try different colors. It should be considered a grade A. Okay guys, very important thing. So as you can see, there is a red indicator. This red indicator usually is white, only turns red if there's contact with liquid damage. So this is a very unique case, very good to document this type of uh, stuff because you reduce the liability for yourself and the customers is less likely to blame any other type of issue on you. So even though the screen works, there's still indication that the water has got into the phone. Luckily, I don't see any sort of corrosion, so he probably got lucky, it went around the frame, but it's very important, you never know, two, three months from now, he can come back with something else, he said, like, you guys did it, it's your fault, so document, let him know that the only thing that is warranted in your service is the screen and the screen only. It's like, like the BAB, like the basic stuff that you need to know and you need to address it to your customer as soon as you see it. Do not delay it, do not ignore it. It's very crucial that you show this to the customer and take pictures in just in case. Okay, first after we're lifting the screen, we're gonna take care of the tri-ring screw. So you're gonna need a tri-ring screwdriver. Uh, 1.5 millimeter or less is okay. But just make sure it's not too small because those are very easy to jam. So you wanna be precise. 
We do also offer like screwdrivers and any sort of tools for this type of repair. If you can check us out again and support the business, it would be greatly appreciated. Thank you. So after you remove the screws from the battery connection, you just hold on. You don't do everything at once uh, because the first thing you want to need to focus is to disconnect the battery. It is very important to disconnect the battery because number one, uh, make sure like there's not going to be any sort of electrostatic discharge onto the board. This is like a recipe for disaster to short circuit chips. Happens more than you can think of. And number two, like it's also for safety measures. Uh, you don't really necessarily need that ESD strap, which most technicians use. Uh, as long as you follow the steps and protocol, you can come up with your own style, you know. But to me, I would pref I better be safe than sorry, you know, like that's the good saying. Okay, so once we're done with that, you can also use a guitar pick. Most people prefer a spudger, but I like guitar pick. First, disconnect the battery. Boom. You can press the power button to make sure like there is no charge on the phone. This is the best way to discharge it, actually. Nice. So you see, keeping everything organized is the key to have efficiency. We're going to disconnect the LCD connection the digitizer as well as the proximity sensor where the face ID is soldered. So this is a very important part that needs to be transferred onto here. There you go. You can set this aside for now and we can move on onto the next step. Okay, so once it's done, we're gonna start by removing the earpiece speaker where the face ID proximity sensor is soldered onto it. Make sure you don't mix up these tiny screws because they seem to be similar with the metal brackets, but they're completely different. So make sure it's organized. What I like to do is like I took this one from the bottom. These mats have like some sort of a grid. So you put this one here. So you know it's like in the bottom right corner. And this is gonna be the top right corner. And to finish, this is gonna be the left top corner. You can use a spudger, you can use a guitar pick, but if you want to be extra safe, you can add a little bit of isopropyl alcohol just to make sure like it helps loosen up the adhesive a little bit. Just a little bit. Give it a good shake. Okay, now that it's done, <clears throat> we're going to slowly start from here and just poke, poke. And the chemistry should work without having too much effort to put. There you go. This is very good that you should take your time with this because any tiny mistake, the face ID is void and the complete repair is done. So take this step very seriously, guys. It's very important. Now we can disregard that part. Make sure you label it grade A. That's the grading system they have for recycling LCD. And we're going to reapply <coughs> the front proximity sensor along with the top or earpiece speaker, whichever you like to call it. Cool. Some of the screens depend on your supplier. Uh, by the way, like we always make sure that it comes with that little mesh. So we do offer the screens, very good quality. Please check us out. But there are some suppliers, they just send you the screen and it's not even glued in the first place. Extra time wasted for nothing. But usually when you see this type of issues, when you buy screens, this should be an indication of quality control from the supplier. So I highly recommend that you double check the parts you get, test them before like you can continue. The less returns you have from customer, the better the supplier it is. All right, now onto the last step. I'm gonna make sure we're very delicate. Do not connect the battery yet. Very good to like just be patient, connect the digitizer. proximity sensor earpiece speaker as well as the LCD. Cool. Now that it's connected, I, I, I like to do them one thing at a time. I don't want to do everything at once. So like I'm going to put the metal bracket first, put the screws, then we can move on just to make sure we got all the screws sorted out, you know, like not to like go fast and you know, and if by any chance you're getting uncomfortable with this, you can always change and get more accuracy. And another key factor that this actually kind of has like a double solution. Some of the screwdriver, they demagnetize quite easily and quite fast. Putting them in this type of mat, remagnetize the screws. 
and makes the process much more doable with one hand instead of using two hands when it comes to like precision. Now we can connect the battery. It's recommended if you're just a beginner, test the screen before like you do these steps. But if you're confident, you've been doing it for a while and especially it's 11 Pro, it's not really that complicated. Um, you can go ahead and close it with confidence. Although I'd recommend if you're a beginner, get into the habit of testing the screen before closing them because never underestimate the easiness of a repair, no matter how short it takes. Like this repair technically should take only 15 minutes, but if you have to spend 45 minutes, but then by all means, use all the time you need. Uh, quality control is better than like hassle of the customer coming here and there and like you lose way more money than you should have. So this is the last step. Boom, beautiful. In the meantime, we're closing. We can turn it on. Cool, it's turning on. So by the time I'm done closing it, it should be on and everything should be working hopefully. And do not forget the panel screw as well. Maybe I'm a little bit, oh, there you go. Nice. So we can already see that the screen is working. And with that, that will be all for this video. Thank you guys for watching. Leave a like and subscribe. Uh, if you have any questions, feedback, criticism, leave them in the comments below. And with the help of your, or the community, we'll make sure to assist you and answer any question you guys have. Again, if you have any questions, uh, or you need any parts and tools, we also do have a website, techdad.com, and we also offer data recovery service and mail-in repair. Thank you guys for watching. See you guys next time.